everybody, it's Bill, Edge of Eternity. I'm gonna start uh, knocking these flanges down on my uh, rad cover. This will be part three. Um, I decided on the, uh, on the straight brakes, I'm just going to use my hammer to tap them over. I've got a piece of uh, two inch angle iron here, two piece of two inch angle iron here holding it down. And uh, this light might be a little bit much, I don't know. Uh, that's probably the light that's above me. But uh, hopefully it'll show up for you guys. Um, so I'm gonna start bringing this down. After I get it down, I'm using the flange. I did this on a test piece. I'm using the flange as the guide on the outside of the bead roller. And it's, it gives me the perfect dimension as far as how far it sets the bead in from the flange. And then I'm going to uh, roll the flange over. Probably ought to make a tool for that. But, uh, and I've got my uh, door hemming flange hammer over here. Might use that too, but anyways, enough talking, let's do it. I always like to use a solid hold down. It just gives you a better, a better flange line. Um, you can kind of planish it here on the bottom if you have a, uh, a solid surface like this uh, piece of angle iron is too and uh, just gives you more control over the part and the straightness. Um, and the, reason, the other reason I put the uh, angle iron down here is because I checked my uh, edge of my table uh, with the straight edge and it's not 100% straight. I mean, it's within, you know, 15 thou or something, but this is gonna be the first thing you see when you open the hood of the car. Kinda nice if it was straight, you know? Someday I'll invest in a uh, sheet metal brake, but it takes up space and uh, space is hard to come by. I think uh, on my last video, I have my gauges and, you know, I always work in millimeters or thousandths. And I think I was thinking of uh, wire gauge, and I was telling you this was 18 gauge, and I went and checked it, and uh, more like 26 gauge. It's uh, 20 thou material, aluminum, it's very thin. So I'm gonna make this and uh, put the beads in it. The test piece I made with the bead was pretty darn stiff, but I could see people coming and leaning right on it. I might have to make this again um, using uh, some thicker aluminum. I'll see how it goes. brake is dead straight, not so much the flange, uh, because I'm going to roll it over. I got to make a uh, DG Customs, uh, DG Retro Customs uh, flange rolling tool. Once I do that, I'll be able to roll this over, but I'm going to do that after the beads in. Let's do the other side. I don't know how well you can see it with the light and everything, but this is that first flange hammered down.
did put a little banana in the uh, part, but I noticed on my test piece, after I roll the flange over and I uh, planish it out, that uh, it straightens this right out. Plus I'll be putting beads in it. I'll be doing some hand qualifying to uh, get the shape exactly the way I want it uh, before I'm done. Okay, here we go with uh, side number two. Seventies. At that time, college was getting more, um, you know, I'll say more desirable, especially to parents for their children to go because, in most cases, most of those parents had never gone to college and they wanted their kids to do that. And uh, I, uh, I was planning on majoring in music. Uh, I've been a musician all my life still to this day and I still am able to use that uh, at different times at churches and, and uh, things like that and so my dad um, gave me some very sound advice because uh, I had two opportunities I could go to uh, Arizona State or um, Central Michigan and they both had really good music programs but Arizona State was warmer but he said, you know, son, I know you love music and that's something you can do all your life, whether you do it for a living or you just do it, you know, on the side, uh, do it for your personal enjoyment, you know, do performances and things like that. So I took heed because he said to me, and you know, he may have been right or wrong about this, but he said, you know, when uh, budgets get cut and teachers get laid off, it's not uncommon, at least at that time, for the music teachers and the music program to be the one that uh, suffers. And so I took his uh, advice and I went and I got, I, I, I got out of the college thing. I didn't do that. Um, I had been accepted and everything, but I decided, uh, you know, my dad made some sense. I was in love with my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time. And really, going away and being away from her didn't feel good. You know what I mean? I was in love, I still am, with the same woman. We've been married for almost 44 years. So I'm glad I took my dad's advice. And I've been able, I was able to get into a uh, metal model maker apprenticeship and building prototype vehicles uh, for 26 years of my career. And then I went on to uh, become a, uh, I was director of engineering for a large tool and die company in Detroit. I retired after 30 years and now I've been working for 15 years at the job I'm at. But um, I hope more young people will consider going the route of the technical school. Um, so glad I did it. I took four years, it was a regular four year apprenticeship, and uh, I think it was the best thing I did for my career. Let's go to the last flange. Okay, I'm gonna do this last uh, downstanding flange, and uh, I'm doing the hammer forming on this anvil that I built when I was an apprentice. They said, hey, you should build yourself an anvil. I'm like, what for? That's a, when they knew I was only an apprentice and I hadn't had any experience, but anyways, um, it's got perfectly 90 degree sides on it. So what I did is I could line this flange up right against the side of the anvil. And this line lines up in line perfectly with this end. That way I know I have 90 degrees. And I wanted this flange to be 90 degrees to both sides. So that's the process I'm using. And I'm just using a flat piece of stock uh, as my hold down and the anvil as my hammer form. You really don't need a lot of fancy tools, although they're nice to have, but uh, for stuff like this, pretty simple. Now for the uh, 
bow tie that I'm going to be, this is very soft material, it just takes a little bit of effort, not much at all to uh, form this. And the other thing, the reason I use a hold down on all these edges is, and this is more so if you have a bend or a convex kind of shape, is you can get back up. The metal likes to back up. And then you have this little rolled edge kind of looking thing. But uh, having something solid, holding the metal down while you're hammering it prevents that from, from happening. So that's that. Let's take a look. This anvil gets used for everything. Everything from uh, tire chuck to uh, hammer form. So here is the, uh, here is the uh, corner on this side. You can see this. I wanted this to be 90 degrees, so I used the square anvil to do that. And then uh, this side. You can also see this surface is 90 degrees to this surface. So the next thing I'm going to do is I will likely run the planishing hammer everywhere. I'm going to uh, put a bead. Same thing here, because what that'll do is it'll stretch the metal a little bit. It's going to go right along the bead line. Uh, and you always, you know, you're stretching the metal when you form it in the in the bead roller. So if you uh, stretch the metal and form it in the bead roller, it's going to distort the part. So what you do ahead of time is you use, either use your English wheel or you use your uh, planishing hammer and you run it through just a little bit just to get a little bit of stretch. So that length of line, when you form that bead in there, that length of line doesn't distort the part. You've already got the metal there ready for the bead to go in, okay? I don't know how well you can see that, but this blade of the uh, solid square is right along this brake line, and same with this blade. It's right along this brake line, and you can see it's a beautiful 90 degree corner. This is from the other side. If you can see, if I hold that right on there, this side is also perfect 90 degree. It's hard to do this with one hand. Perfect 90 degree along this flange and the same flange we checked from the other side. Okay, now the last check is to make sure that these flanges are parallel with each other so they don't look like they're running on some crazy angle. So when I measure here, see if I can get that on there. Uh, the light's bad, but that's five and seven eighths. When I come down to this end and measure, five and seven eighths. And that's from, first of all, starting from one edge, calling it the master. You remember from the last video, I called this edge the master because it was rolled on the, uh, at the aluminum mill. So this was a perfectly straight edge. I came in roughly a half inch, laid out my line. Then I took some dividers and swung my brake line and then you know, ran tangent to that with a straight edge to get my second straight line, okay? And then I, I came 90 degrees off of that line to draw this brake line. And uh, then I used the 90 degree angle of this uh, anvil as a hammer form and was able to get a really good 90 degree corner. So here you see the original cardboard template. My computer, my, no, 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 no. My cardboard aided design. And, uh, and then the aluminum piece, we're one step closer now with the flanges uh, downturned. Uh, so like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna planish along the bead lines to stretch the material a little bit, um, install the beads, and then roll the flange. The other thing I still need to do is make a three-piece die to uh, press the um, Chevy bow tie emblem into the center of the aluminum. You can see that on the uh, cardboard template. So that's the plan. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you later.